earliest time period in Earth's long history, the Hadean Eon. I kind of went on a bit previously about the difficulties in classifying what could be called deep time or geological time on Earth. So let's go directly to the Hadean Eon. In an earlier video, I waxed poetic about why the earliest Earth fascinates me. And if you want to see that video and hear more about the early Earth, its formation as a molten planet, and its cooling to rocks, oceans, atmosphere, and eventually, in the eon that follows, the Archean, permanent rocks, and the beginnings of continents, check out this video. But today, in a display of obsessiveness, I want to talk about another aspect of the Hadean, how it's defined. In other words, does the era have boundaries? What separates it from what came before and what came after? And I'm going to take this on in two parts because I don't want this to be ridiculously long. So part one today, what defines the beginning of the Hadean? And the concluding part, defining the end of the Hadean, coming soon to a channel near you. Now defining what the Hadean really is, is challenging from the onset. As the organization tasked with classifying Earth's deep history, the International Commission on Stratigraphy, elides over issues of the earliest Earth, referring to the Hadean as an informal eon, in contrast to all the other eons. That's not helpful in defining the Hadean, but perhaps one shouldn't be too critical as they are charged with maintaining the international geologic time scale. And from a geological point of view, there are very few rocks that have survived from this early period, except for zircons, very tough minerals that can survive extreme conditions, but not rocks per se. Most rocks that did form during the Hadean were subject to melting due to plate tectonics or to erosion over time. Given this and the limited data about this early period compared to later ones, this business of the Hadean being informal makes a certain amount of sense. Nonetheless, no one can dispute that the planet actually did form, and there is a name for it, informal, maybe, for the earliest time in its history. A lot of people, many of them professional geologists, and while I'm only an interested layman, I'm definitely in this group, want to ground the Hadean, no pun intended, and the classification of time periods in Earth's past, not in arbitrary dating, but in events that are related in important and meaningful ways in Earth's history. So let's have a quick look at the currently used time scale for the four billion years before the evolution of complex life. This is the whole of the Precambrian, from 4.6 billion years ago to 541 million years ago, consisting of the Proterozoic, the Archean, and the Hadean Eons. The beginning of the Hadean is dated to 4,600 million years ago, or 4.6 billion years ago, with the transition to the Archean at 4 billion years ago. The dates are somewhat arbitrary, as you can see from the round numbers on the chart. 4,000 million years ago, 3,600 million years ago, 3,200 million years ago. Why 4.6 billion years ago? That is the approximate age of the Earth. So 4.6 billion years ago represents the formation of the planet from the protoplanetary disk or solar nebula from which it formed. And why 4 billion years for the end of the Hadean and the beginning of the Archean? This is defined only very roughly by the approximate age of the earliest rocks. So I want to advocate for grounding the first eon in Earth's history in actual events in Earth's history. And before trying to do so, I need to introduce a proposal that was made in 2010. These guys are hardcore classifiers. They're even suggesting separating the time before the Hadean into four periods, which strains the credulity of even an inveterate classifier such as me. Now wait a minute, before the Hadean? What could be before the earliest eon? We'll get to that in a minute. I already showed you the current time scale which shows the beginning of the Hadean Eon at 4.6 billion years with the formation of the Earth. The proposal these authors made is to define a period before the Hadean 
and in so doing ground the Hadean in a rational and real event. Here's how it goes. The beginning of the solar system involved collisions within the solar nebula between particles of cosmic dust, which began to adhere to each other within the disk, growing the particles over a very long period of time into boulder-sized planetesimals. The more massive planetesimals acquire more gravity, pulling or accreting smaller particles into themselves, and it's the progressive accreting of more and more planetesimals into large bodies over millions of years that eventually results in planets. This period of planet formation is one of massive collisions, and the last of these massive collisions in what will become the Earth and the Moon is now understood through what is called the giant impact hypothesis. The Moon formed out of an impact between two bodies, one larger sometimes called Tellus, and a second, a Mars-sized body called Theia, about a tenth as massive as the first. This collision occurred some 30 to 100 million years after the formation of the bodies. And the phrase these authors use about this collision is that this is the true birth of Earth. It's certainly the true birth of the Earth-Moon system. The current study and details about the formation of the Moon are fascinating and would make a great video. But this is not that video. The 2010 proposal is that the period before the collision that formed the Moon be termed the Chaotian Eon, after the chaotic interactions of masses in the early solar system. The eon would begin with the earliest part of the process of formation of the solar system, which can be seen as the formation of the solar nebula as a closed system separate from the giant molecular cloud that gave birth to it. And the end of the Chaotian eon would come with the formation of the moon. This offers two things that are very desirable for a grounding of Earth history in real events. First, a very early eon defined by the formation of the solar nebula at the beginning and the formation of the moon at the end. And second, a beginning to the Hadean eon that is also grounded in a real and known event. So the Hadean would begin with the formation of the moon and of the Earth-Moon system. Beginning the Hadean with this event makes even more sense when you consider the radical change before and after this event. One of the observations a moon-forming theory needs to account for is the near identity of the materials composing the moon and the Earth. Most of the moons around other planets in the solar system differ from their planets in the precise details of their chemical composition, as might happen if a moon were a piece of one of two impactors or if a moon were captured by the gravitational field of a planet, or if a collision resulted in an incomplete mixing of the colliding bodies. But it appears that the best explanation for the chemical identity of the Earth and the Moon is that they were the product of a complete mixing of the two original bodies. To see the Hadean then as beginning with the Earth-Moon formation then makes sense on another level. The Earth was not only radically reformed by the intense energy of a collision that mixed the contents of the two bodies, but it became in some sense a different planet with the addition of this energy and the new material. In the next video, I want to talk about the challenges of defining the end of the Hadean, of grounding the Hadean-Archean transition in real events. But one last thing, and I think this fascinates me more than anything else about the whole story of the meaning of the early events in Earth's origin. And it's about this proposal for a Chaotian Eon, the time between the very beginning of the solar system and the moon-forming event. And it's this. The story of the formation of the Sun and the solar system is one of astronomical events, of cosmology, of star formation, etc. And the story of the history of the early Earth is one of geological events, of cooling magma, of rock, ocean, and atmosphere formation. A Chaotian period tells the story of something we know had to have happened. 
It describes a process that links astronomy and geology. It conveys the story of this transition. A Chaotian Eon provides a rational transitional framework for thinking about the continuity between the astronomical events that formed the solar system and the geological events that followed. Pretty cool. Be sure to subscribe, hit the notification button, and thanks a lot for watching.